Hey everybody, the next property we're going to look at, which applies to flex child items, is called order. And as this name suggests, this one is going to be used to order or reorder those child items. So let's get into it and see how it works. Alright, so if you've been following along with the previous videos in this Flexbox series, you should be very familiar with this markup here. And as you can see, we have these four child divs within this main parent div. And those four child divs are represented here by these four blue boxes. And what I want to point out to you right now is that each one of these child items has some text content with a number. So we have one, two, three, four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the font size of the text content of each one of those items so we can really see each one. So let's take font size up to three rems. And there we go. Now we can see it much easier. So take notice of the fact that the way that these child items are laid out or arranged is in the same order that they appear in the HTML. So we see them here, one, two, three, four, just like they appear here, one, two, three, four. Obviously, if we move two, for example, to the beginning, we would now see that reflected here in the DOM. But let's put that back. So we have our original order now. And what the flex property of order is gonna do is it's going to allow us to reorder these items, but doing it with CSS. So in order to get access to each of these individual child items in the CSS, let's create some additional CSS rules. And we'll use the nth of type selector. So let's do dot child and let's say nth of type. And this first one will pass in one. And we're gonna make four of these. Each one will represent one of these child items. So the second one will be nth of type two, the third one nth of type three, and then the last one will be nth of type four. All right, so now that we have a rule available for each one of these child items, we can start applying the order property to each one of them. And just before we do that, take note of the fact that the default value for order is zero. Okay, so right now, each one of these child items has a default value of zero for order. So what that means is if I simply give a value of one to any one of these child items, that element is going to move to the end of this row. So for example, let's come into our rule for the first child item. And let's give it an order property. And let's give that order property a value of one. And let's save. And now check it out. That child item with text content one is now at the end of this row. Remember, these all still have a value of zero. So all that matters is that this one has a value or an order value greater than these. And that value can be anything. Like that value can be 100 and it'll still be at the end. Now, since this one is 100, what if we wanted to put, let's say the third one at the end? Well, what we would have to do is give that one an order value greater than 100. So let's come into the rule for the third child div here. And let's say order. And we can give it now any number greater than 100. We can just do 101, for example. And now we see that that third div has moved after one to become the last child item in the row. But let's back up for a second. Let's actually get rid of these two order properties here in the first and the third child divs. Let's resave. And now we're basically back to where we were when we started. And what I want to show you is that we can also use negative numbers. Since the default value is zero for order, if we use negative one, we can also take elements that come later in the row and we can move them earlier in the row. So let's say, for example, that we wanted to put the second one to start first. So if we like, we could come into that second rule and we can give it an order value of anything less than zero. So let's say negative one. And there we go. We can see that that second child item has moved before the first one to start at the beginning of this row. So you may be wondering, why change the order via CSS at all? I mean, you could always go into the HTML, right, and change the source order. Well, there are a few reasons why it might be useful to be able to change the order in the CSS. For one thing, imagine a media query where you reduce the width of the viewport, and when you do so, you want those child items in the flex container to reorder themselves. Well, using the order property on the individual flex items could be a very easy way to accomplish this. And then there might be certain scenarios in which it's beneficial 
for the source order in the HTML to actually be different than the visual presentation order. Perhaps this can be beneficial for SEO purposes. Also, when it comes to screen reader users, it might be beneficial to have the HTML source order one way and the visual presentation another way. But at the same time, when it comes to accessibility, we have to be careful because there's many cons to doing this. If changing the order of these child flex items could throw off the reading order or the tab focus order. But this is really the subject for a video in itself.